I can still see all yes, of you. Yes, you can go ahead. Okay. We'll start then. Hello, and thank you everyone for tuning into our session on the role of artificial intelligence in education and the opportunities and challenges that that presents. You know, it is the eve of National Technology Day, so I'm very glad to be hosting this session, uh, you know, with some of the sharpest minds in the business. Uh, you know, the integration of artificial intelligence in education, it's really opened up a world of opportunities. And I'd even go to the extent of saying democratized education for all like never before. Uh, you know, the use of AI in space can enhance educational experiences from personalized learning to adaptive assessment, immersive content and global collaboration opportunities. However, as with all opportunities, this also comes with a host of challenges, whether that is data privacy concerns and data bias to digital divide issues and ethical dilemmas as well. So to discuss all of that, let me quickly introduce our esteemed panel of guests who are very much at the forefront of this field here to answer all of our questions. Starting with uh, Prateek Maheshwari, the co-founder of Physics Vala. We have Mayank Kumar, the co-founder and managing director at Upgrad. Uh, Maheshwar Perry, the chairman and founder at Careers 360. Ujwal Singh, the founder and CEO at Infinity Learn. And Ashish Munjal, the co-founder and CEO at Sunstone. Gentlemen, thank you very much uh, for your time here with us, uh, for joining us on this session. Prateek, let's start with you to just set the context for this chat in terms of what artificial intelligence, uh, you know, the emerging technologies have done in the field of education uh, and how it has changed the landscape today from what we had, say, five, seven years ago. So, you know, AI have like you know, a direct use case in education. And uh, one, the, the biggest achievement of the AI is it had made education even more personalized. Uh, the learning paths, the revision modules, the backlog clearance, the doubt clearance, the career counselings is now even more personalized with the help of AI. And uh, the TAT have been reduced to answer, the cost have been reduced to uh, reduced by, by significant of 90%. So that's, that's a direct impact in a student's learning uh, journey, which, uh, and like, in, in uh, physics for us use case, uh, academic doubts used to be a big challenge. Okay. Uh, but after intervention of AI technology, now now it has been like you know, the tag has been reduced by ninety percent. So uh, personalization is the biggest achievement of AI in in, in learning. And uh, you know, uh, currently we have launched our our AI guru uh, last last month, and uh, we have close to five million queries on a monthly basis, and a uh, one and a half million. Uh, monthly active users using AI to uh, make their uh, learning journey per personalized and uh, you know, to, to clear their uh, revision, backlog, doubts. So this has been uh, phenomenal for us so far. Okay, I hear a lot of uh, use of the word personalized learning experience. Mayank, if you could just take that forward with some examples. Uh, you know, you must get students from diverse fields, backgrounds, varied ambitions. How is AI enhancing this personalized experience for them today? Sure. So uh, it's just maybe uh, to give a slightly broader context. So education has got three broad components, any education business. There is a component of counseling, which is to do with acquisition and sort of how you look at customer acquisition, et cetera. And there's a fair bit of counseling that is needed. AI plays an important role there. Hmm. Then there's the context of what Pratik mentioned, learning. So when you're learning on an ongoing basis, whether it is doubt resolution, whether it is revision, so on and so forth, that's a critical aspect. And then the third one is outcomes, which is the mm -hmm. point of time in our context of sort of adult learning and professional education, which is where interview prep and communication prep starts coming in for you to crack interviews. So mm -hmm. across all these things, I'll just give you a couple of examples. I think AI is getting in, embedded in all, across all three parts of the education sort of business and education life cycle. Um, the call that we have taken it up with, that we will start with outcome first and we'll try to blend AI a lot in outcome and then work backwards to learning and then to sort of acquisition. Uh, and in the outcome front, I'll give you a couple of use cases. One good use case is uh, an interview bot. Okay. So I, if I have an interview with, let's say, uh, a big tech or a Microsoft or Infosys or PCS tomorrow, I can start the playlist and have an interview conversation, a simulated interview conversation with the bot of certain topics that have gone through as part of the program. And mm -hmm. that allows you to sort of practice much faster without accessing a mentor coming in live at that point of time. The second use case is uh, you can take the entire module, all the videos and all the text, 
and sort of upload it into the into the bot. Mm-hmm. And then you can play questions answer with the bot. And the bot will give you a sort of very AI sort of engine will give you a very clear summarized view. You can say, in 13 minutes, I want to revise the entire topic of last five weeks. So okay. it will give you a 13 minute summary or a 20 minute summary. And that just allows you to quickly brush through all the topics very, very quickly. Mm-hmm. Uh, and on the learning front, again, doubt resolution of Pratik mentioned that once you have embedded all the material onto the system, you can ask questions that, how do you measure I don't know, speed or time, or how do you measure the linear regression of this particular topic, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Once you input the question, you get sort of uh, prescriptive responses. So I think those are the ways in which AI has tried to create use cases. Uh, mm-hmm. All of those are generative AI use cases, not just pure AI, because a lot yeah. of these things get built on as we sort of make the model even more sort of sophisticated over a period of time. Yeah. Uh, you know, today no conversation can be had without generative AI. We've all sort of had a crash course in it, whether we wanted to or not. But I'll get to more specifics on the generative AI in just a bit. But Maheshwar, uh, just your quick thoughts, as well, just to exaggerate. I mean, we all, I mean, at least I can say for myself, we're coming from the era of, you know, that chalkboard, physical libraries to go solve your doubts. We didn't even have, uh, you know, access to Google all the time. We used to go to internet cafe to be able to Google. So, you know, I'm, I'm just talking of an extinct era now, but, you know, in, in what ways has, you know, the traditional educational model, the career coaching model really transformed and been challenged uh, by the advent of artificial intelligence? I think, uh, see, I'll limit myself to the career counseling or exploration part of it, uh, Ritu, mm-hmm. because that's what we do. Uh, yeah. uh, like in India, you actually have about 40,000 colleges offering 500,000 plus courses, right? Each of them, uh, some students can get in, some can't get in, some can effort, some can't effort. Uh, some it's a possibility, some, you know, affordability or access is a problem. Hmm. Now, each of these questions has to be, uh, you know, answered by an AI bot, right? Uh, and which is what we try to use. Like my AI bot based on the student journey will start prompting questions to the student, hmm. right? Uh, so you're coming through an article which is to do with uh, a physics question, right? Whatever. Mm-hmm. Then we say, okay, okay, are you taking a JE examination? Are you taking a BITSAT examination? So we start prompting questions based on the student journey. Mm-hmm. And then as and when the student keeps, you know, responding or engaging with that bot, the next set of questions will keep coming in for us. So for me, it's about inputting all this data, about 500,000 courses that are there being offered by these 40,000 plus colleges mm-hmm. across the system. Uh, and also inputting the 400 examinations that make you, uh, you know, select or get into any of these colleges or courses with the cutoff, with the fees, with the public versus private, uh, uh, with the location. So a student from Karnataka will find a different set of, uh, you know, responses as compared to a student from Delhi because mm-hmm. the colleges are different. The regulation might be different. Like in Delhi, you don't have a private university. In, in, in De- Karnataka, you have a lot of private universities, right? So you can always prompt saying, would you want to study in a private space or a public space kind of a thing, right? So for me, it's about, you know, using all the data that we have mm-hmm. to create, you know, or prompt student to start discovering paths that he may not have actually, it's, it's not been a part of his original consideration set, mm-hmm. right? And that opens a uh, you know world of opportunities because many students think they know everything, but when they start realizing that okay, it's not just these four options, but you have six options. Yeah, it it opens a world of opportunities because suddenly your uh, you know your options become six, and to that extent, you are slightly more confident of dealing with it. it can be a, of a choose out cho- choosing a co- course or choosing mm-hmm. a college or choosing a pathway. Yeah, and yeah. which is what we tend to do uh, as far as uh, AI is concerned. Yeah, well, n- not everyone today wants to be you know, the traditional doctor, engineer, teacher, et cetera, and go to the IITs and the IIMs or the Delhi universities Thankfully of the so. world. But, uh, you know, uh, Ujwal, just to take this forward, uh, you know, a lot has been said about personalization, about increasing access, the scale of it, the affordability angle. Uh, but, you know, how well are students itself are, are adopting to this tech first, tech led method? And how deep would you say is the penetration of technology in education? Or are we still talking about you know, metros, tier two, perhaps tier three cities? So actually for learners, this has to be seamless. They should not experience technology. They should actually experience learning journey. Uh, And as far as, you know, tier two, tier three, tier four towns is concerned, slowly and gradually, actually the new Gen AI models are so lighter that even tier four is using it. Uh, Rural areas are using it because uh, it is multilingual. It is easy to use, ask a question. But we all are, you know, at a very surface level at this point of time. 
you said uh, there are a lot of people who are preparing outside of JE NEET. We are a company which focuses on JE NEET. Yeah? <laughs> uh, and our yeah. job is to build aspiration for people to prepare for engineering or medical. Hmm. I tell you, this is a long journey, four-year journey. And a uh, lot of times there are motivations and demotivations and not doing good. Yeah. For physically imagining parent, teacher, anybody to find out each and every small nuances in this learning journey is very difficult. I think hyper-personalization, we can't stop at personalization. Hyper-personalization is required. Hmm. And where we see uh, most of us at this point of time are at point solution. Ask a question, I'm solving all of these are very point solution. We foresee a system solution in next two to three years time hmm. where we find out where the child is doing good and start motivating him for doing good and then taking through a learning journey. So we are calling it AI motivator. And I think we are very, very excited about this whole concept of AI motivator because uh, problem solving is still a middle tier problem. Uh, but motivation for a child, you, you know what's happening in different parts of the country. Hmm. Uh, motivation for the child to stay on course for this three to four year journey while they are learning is a very, very different kind of a journey where we think AI can be a very, very helpful tool. How, how would, uh, what role specifically, how would you use AI to motivate students? Any examples you could give us? I mean, surely uh, reading some affirmations will not do the job. So say for instance, 40 students took test. Hmm. One child who is at 40th percentile. But if he comes to know that question number seven, only two students inside the classroom has done right. He says, you're this topic, subtopic, you're doing well. Now let's see how will you do better in X, Y, Z. And imagine this to happen in a physical classroom is just not possible. That level of granular data is just not there. And then, you know, what AI is doing, what is hyperpersonalization? And can we just take an example of a transportation? There's hmm. an aircraft going point A to point B. People are boarding that. What companies like Gopal do saying that, where do you want to? What AI will do, help education to say, hey, do you want to actually go to IIT Mumbai? Or no, Bits Pilani is fine. No, I think VIT is better for me. I Where do I want to go versus my own education? What kind of schooling I have gone to? What is my present learning levels? What is the best I can try at this point of time? I think these are very uh, high level of nuances when it comes to AI. And because mm -hmm. we work in this space, and luckily we have you know million of learners who are actually on that system that throws so much of data, which Pratik was actually talking is that, you know this is all about who has the highest amount of data uh, to understand what kind of goals they set, to mm -hmm. understand where do they want to go. Because not that everybody is aspiring on day one to say that, oh, I want to go to IIT Mumbai and I want to be in top 100. Yes, there are some. But our job is to help the learner to reach point A to point B in the best possible manner and make his journey easy. Okay. Um, well, Ashish, uh, you know, equitable access to quality education, I think uh, you at Sunstone have been passionate about. Uh, just tell us how, thanks to AI, uh, you're addressing this digital divide that is very much prevalent in India. Yeah, absolutely. So I think, see, AI is at a very, very early stage right now. And it is up to us, like we have been given the platform, it is up to us to create the use cases on top of that. So from our perspective also, as Mayam talked about, see, you can talk about career counseling, you can talk about learning and outcomes and all those things. But ultimately, what matters for student is the outcome, is the career services, is the placements. Mm -hmm. So one single metric that we are very, very focusedly driving through uh, AI is that can I improve my student selection rate? Can because of AI tools, let's say if earlier there were two, two and a half percent uh, selection rate for every job opportunity, can I increase that to three, three and a half percent? Mm -hmm. Now, how does that happen? Let's say if a student has 1,000 or 1,500 or 200, 2,000 job opportunities available to him uh, throughout the placement season. Now, can I tell him through AI that these are the top 50 better job profiles as per your career, as per your learning over a period of last two, three years? Because we have been, we are generating a lot of data on student. So I know whether he's good in operations, he's good in finance, in finance, whether, what is the skill that he's carrying? So we can do a lot of sorts skill set mapping to the student, create very specific job recommendation for the student, 
and then once we have that subset of the jobs prepare student for those jobs and go to that extent that create maybe 50 different customized resume for every single individual as per that job and prepare him for that job let's say if there is i'll give you a simple example if there is a gold loan uh, opportunity come for student can i prepare student cv can i prepare him specifically as a professional who knows how to sell gold loans now once we do that he automatically becomes one up as compared to other candidates who are appearing for that now doing that physically it is impossible to scale it up to thousands of the students who are preparing for those jobs with ai now you can do it seamlessly as i said it's early days but we are already in the process where we already started doing some of these things and we are already started to see results of some of these things already in our selection rate targets isn't that hyper personalized where you're not just talking about a career in finance go loan finance i mean any yes. examples you could give us yeah, okay. absolutely. So like the Manapuram gold loan example that I gave, uh, there are a lot of other companies like in insurance, like in uh, analytics, you can have student prepare specifically for those things. Otherwise, okay. student cannot prepare for, let's say, thousand skills. If okay. a student has applied for five jobs in a month, you tell them that, okay, these are the skills that you need to get. This is the CV that you need to upload. Let's say an uh, analytics company, a student may have done five certification. Uh, hmm. analytics company won't bother about let's say you've done digital marketing or if you have done something on the sales side then you need to highlight the analytic part of the projects that you have done much more for that company hmm. earlier what used to happen is that you there used to be only one cv now you can create multiple such cvs for single individual you are hmm. not just lying or you're not you're just highlighting what is recruiter looking in that cv similarly okay prepare that candidate much more for that specific job. Like even I give you 30 minute brief on a specific JD, you will be much more prepared for that specific job. I, I, I wonder, Maheshwar, if you want to come in on this, uh, uh, and, and, and I'm just thinking out loud, uh, you know, becoming that specific to matching the skills, of course, has the positives. Are there any ethical considerations as well in this, uh, when you're looking to tailor someone's, uh, you know, talents to where they might be best fit, you know, just, just your broad thoughts, Maheshwar. Mute. Maheshwar. We're no longer talk, talk, talking of AI, but we're talking of ethics. Am I right in saying that? <laughs> okay. Well, so I'll well, stick with that. Oh, no, that's okay. That's okay oh. with me. Uh, I think as a counselor, I would always want the student to have a broad set of options and have the foundation to be correct. I would not want him to be too specialized in something because it, Assuming two years down the line, it becomes a problem. You know, if that industry goes into a problem, then the student goes into a problem. That's my counseling advice to a student. Like I remember during COVID times, everyone who's done MBA in hospitality, hmm. you know, hotels were sacking people. And you actually had specialized course of MBA in hospitality. Like recently, I know a case in Bombay, one of the big beast, uh, management universities there, uh, where their MBA in retail management could not place a student, whereas MBA general could place a student in a retail management company. Hmm. So uh, there is always a, 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 a you know a, a question mark of how specialized the specialization must be if you're looking for a job. Hmm. So my as a counselor, I would I would not want to get into that. But having said that. The companies okay. there would easily pick up students who are specialized in a certain thing. So what Ashish said, you know, if Manapuram wants to, uh, you know, has an option of picking up people who sell gold loans, they'll mm. for sure pick them up first before they pick up anyone else. That's for a possibility. Sure. So yeah. it's an easier pathway, for example, uh, and a very specific pathway to get onto it. But assuming tomorrow RBI to come back on uh, hit down on gold loans, for example, now mm. what is a question mark that one needs to answer. Well, uh, never mind uh, all of those challenges. We're not getting into that today. But uh, Pratik, uh, just to shift gears a bit again, coming back to the uh, you know the education itself. Uh, you know, back in the day with the traditional newsrooms, uh, sorry, the classrooms again, you have to go with the pace and tone set by the educator, no matter what your individual challenge may be. Uh, you know, maybe you're slightly ahead of the class, maybe you're slightly behind the class, maybe on a certain day you're not 100%. But we live in a different world, world today, thanks to technology and whatnot. Uh, you know, how do you think AI is addressing this specific challenge of individual differences in learning styles and pace within classrooms? 
Yeah, so like you know, uh, one thing is uh, currently uh, the trend which I have been seeing, AI is coming as a good helping hand for the students. Uh, it is like you know, so uh, I'm a firm, firm believer of you know, that there's a no substitute of teacher. But like you know, post classroom learning, it is mm -hmm. enhancing the post classroom learning like anything. Uh, like. Uh, Earlier, we had made this academic doubt engine. Then we have realized that 40% of the doubts are non-academic in nature. The, it's not just the students need academic help, as Ujwal has had said. Like, you know, they need help in motivation. They need mm. help in mental health. They have some personal issues. Like, you know, they, they want to help in, uh, in strategizing, revising. Like, you know. So post-classroom learning is enhanced a lot with, with the help of AI. And within within classroom also, you know, we have a very unique setup. Like you know, we run India's mega classrooms where forty thousand students study together. So we have a lot of AI intervention within the classrooms. Teachers yeah. get sentiment analysis, like uh, whether whether the uh, mass of the audience are getting the concept or not, like you know, how they are behaving. Uh, like you know, the students continuously chat within the classrooms and they do mm -hmm. thumbs up, thumbs down. Uh, they ask doubt. A lot of students do this. Uh, I have the same doubt thing within the classroom. So teachers get this sentiment analysis and the vibe of the batch in the real time, which helps a teacher enhancing, like you know, enhancing uh, their uh, their efforts within the classroom, whether the class is getting or not. So it is helping uh, currently a classroom teacher, and it is it is uh, like you know it, it is extending their help post classrooms, hmm. and uh, it. Like you know, it all depends on like you know how how big is your user base, how accurate is your data, and how hyper personalized is your query. Okay, uh, what you're essentially talking about is a more complementary system between the educator and the AI. Mayank, just to take that forward. Uh, I think we'd all agree the role of educators can't be diminished. What steps are you taking to ensure that you know these AI-driven tools complement rather than replace the role of educators in the learning process? Because Whenever we talk about AI, there's always that fear of job replacement. Uh, just to take us through what kind of steps you're taking to ensure that there's complementary. See, whenever new technology comes, first there's fear mongering, and then yeah. the technology gets settled in. Um, so I also believe that teachers, uh, I mean, see, education requires, and I'm just using a parlance, education requires somebody to slap you to study. It's not a very easy, you can't Netflix and chill in education. Um, we have built just uh, for reference, we have built a, a, um, a Spotify kind of playlist for the kind of interview question that gets asked in, let's say, top 50 employers. So you okay. can just play it and the questions will come. You practice, you practice, you practice. But you know how it is that education requires a little bit of cognitive load. And when the cognitive load hits, mm -hmm. you can't, like Netflix and chill, you can't just enjoy, I don't know, linear regression 101. Uh, that's saying that, look, from 1 a.m. to 5 a.m., I'm going to finish up all the chapters. Mm -hmm. uh, and therefore, there is a need, uh, and I'm, I'm giving you an example that even as kids, when we used to prepare for a board examination, you would be sitting in a home and studying for the board examination, but your mother still would not know the topic that you're studying. She would still wake up in the morning at 5 a.m. or 4 a.m. or whatever time that you wake up and sit next to you. Mm -hmm. And that's the time when the mother very smartly has taken a social contract with you saying, that, look, if I'm awake and I'm sitting with you, you must be awake and learning. Uh -huh. the yeah. And that motivation aspect is very critical uh, in the context of what a teacher brings in. See, the, one of the big, so what, what AI does is it makes content consumption far more seamless and easy. Mm -hmm. It brings a lot of sort of elements around how to learn and how to sort of um, get educated in the context of how you can consume content. But education is a much broader discipline issue rather than a content consumption issue. If you cannot bring in discipline, and the reason why classrooms were designed and classrooms were earlier designed as, earlier designed as jails, hmm. because once you put the kids in there, they might as well study uh, because they don't have distractions to look at anything else. But in today's context with AI coming in, you can consume content. But like watching entertainment, education requires cognitive load. To manage cognitive load, you require that human intervention to guide and support the learner to go through the path. Without the teacher and faculty, it's very difficult. So that's my broader thought process. I think teachers will not be replaced. Mentors and coaches will not be replaced. We will. We used to have libraries earlier. Online yeah. education. Libraries never replaced education. Yeah. Online content will never replace education. AI will not replace education. AI will enhance the way education and content consumption will happen. 
libraries were there, we would still go to universities. Content in online were there, people still go to the MITs and the IITs of the world. AI will come, people will still go to the coach. I think the, the way to leverage it is how do you make self-learning of the learner much better? But if you guide it and assist it with an individual teacher in that particular environment, the outcome and the efficacy of the learning is much, much higher. I mean, there are no mm. questions about it. And that's why a good teacher is a lot more in demand today than earlier because they need to use the tool to be able to di disseminate that or disseminate that information in much seamless manner. Well, I don't know about earlier classrooms being jails, but I think we all had a, a shorter, smaller issue with attention deficits, thanks to whatever environment we're in. But Ujwal, just to play the devil's uh, advocate, and I'll come to you on this. While Mayank is very clear, you know, you, you need both and AI cannot replace classrooms and so on and so forth. But the fact of the matter is that for small things, I don't really have to go to a physics yeah. wala or an upgrad or to, you know, anyone for that matter. I can log into chat GPT. I don't need to know coding. I can write in English and I can say, hey, can you teach me, you know, X, Y, Z today? Uh, you know, thanks to the advent of technology, that is also happening. At some level, do you see the advent of generative AI challenging the traditional ed tech model that we have today? Even though if you would have not asked me to play, play the devil's advocate, I would have gone ahead and done that. I have two perspectives on this. How AI is helping a good teacher first. You know, it's like a, a doctor getting a blood report. Hmm. So now he knows through this help of AI that where all is the problem with the child. So one guy has a little struggling in algebra. The other one is, you know, in calculus. I'm not going to deal with them. I'm going to make a small cohorts and I'm going to deal with them. And this happens on online classes, but they is fairly aware. Uh, this happens in online classes much more. But I think uh, the challenge for privilege was never there to learn. So how mm. somebody who can go to MIT or Harvard or IIMs, there was never a problem. Challenge starts when you go to tier two, tier three, tier four towns, when getting a good faculty is a dream come true. I come from a family which runs a school in a small village. I work with a company. My parent organization is, runs you know thousands of schools in India. Mm. I Getting a good teacher in a tier three, tier four town is deemed come true. And I think that child, which you asked earlier also, that child in a tier three, tier four, who had the less privileged education for all these years, now has a mobile phone with internet, which makes him so much near to what is happening in the advanced world. I think that's the biggest gap. I, I, I go to small cities, villages, they all know chat GPT. They all know Gen AI. They may not tell you Gen AI, but they say that there's an app. I go, I ask question, and uh, it answers. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there's there's a big big shift which has happened. You know, a lot of people ask me, "What do you think? You work in ed tech?" I said, "Look around. You ask a question to a child. Give a book. Give a phone. Where will the child go? Phone. The native phone. The native learners have moved on." They, they're not going back to the traditional way of learning. Hmm. If we can make learning easy, if we can somehow make learning easy, and I understand what Mank is saying is a very important point. We are not Netflix or we are not you know, any other entertainment channel. Uh, when it comes to study, you start struggling. Uh, yeah, I was, I was you in reach Patna. a point of saturation. Uh, more than that, you know, I was in Patna. This child came to me and said, uh, I can say in Hindi that, he said, sir, padhate hai, to samajh mein aata hai. Jab mein akeli hostel mein bat ke karta hu, to nahi samajh mein aata hai. You mm -hmm. know, and this is such a generic problem. All those who have prepared for tests, it's so easy when you see somebody else doing it. But once you have the video, you are re-watching, you're saying, why this guy actually, you know, uh, has taken this step over this step. I think in my view, uh, this is a big, big advantage for learners. Uh, wherever they are, but bigger advantage when you are in tier three, tier four town, we don't have access of good education, it is a big helpful. But for teachers also, it is a big help. Till now, you were not knowing the learner from a data point of view. It was not a gut feeling, okay, he's doing good, he's solving questions. Hmm. But once you get before the class, imagine if you have 100 students and you get to see that my classroom has not done very well in class question number three, seven, and nine, and they hmm. come from this subtopic. And you know that they have not learned that. And that's the biggest advantage from a learner's point of view, for a teacher's point of view. Okay, uh, Ashish, just to close this conversation on generative AI, what do you assess? I mean, how has yeah. it challenged the typical ed tech model today? So I, I'll just uh, come back 
uh, with my comments on the previous question also that you asked to Mayank because we work with a lot of teachers in tier 3, tier 4 towns and what one thing that we have seen is that now with AI, all of these teachers are also becoming sort of super teachers because now they have best the power of, of data. Yes, yeah. best of everything available on a single click. Like if I am a teacher in Coimbatore and I want to generate a case study on a local Coimbatore business, I have to just give four or five prompts and I will have that case study. And with the faculty guide, teachers note everything ready. So suddenly it doesn't matter which part of the country I am sitting in. I can give best of the quality education to the student with very little intervention from, let's say, a central learning and outcomes team sitting here uh, in Gurgaon. So hmm. this is the power of AI, which is actually helping every single teacher to impart much better quality of education to the students as well. Okay. Uh, you know, we, we've spoken a lot about opportunities, about replacement of one by the other. But Pratik, a quick word on the challenges as well. We're running out of time. Ethical considerations related to the use of AI and edtech, you know, data privacy, the algorithm bias that it comes with, uh, you know, ensuring inclusivity, accessibility for all learnings, uh, all learners rather. What are you at Physicswala doing to address some of these challenges? So, uh, in in my sense, like you know, the biggest challenge is the accuracy because, like you know, if you see the current chat yeah. GPT is not able to solve the IIT advanced uh, advanced paper or like you know, uh, or even like you know. Uh, uh, not able to clear with the with the flying marks in the IIT mains paper as well. Accuracy mm. is a big challenge, and uh, it takes a lot of time and effort, like you know, to make your model more accurate. Like, you know, it will be a continuous process, and especially when it comes to education, your teacher has to be accurate. Like you know, if it's solving doubt, if it's guiding you anywhere, so accuracy is a big big challenge uh, in, uh, in in current ecosystem, and like you know. Uh, the only way out there is you have to you have to work very hard and train your mo model with the right data sets and you have to continuous iterate the process to overcome this challenge. Uh, being ethical also, like you know, uh, it is very important like, that that your AI guru or or your solution has to be uh, has to be very ethical in terms of like you know, uh, in terms of uh, solutioning. Uh, mm -hmm. But like you know, the, the there is a continuous development in, in in the technology and generative AI space. So we will see. We will uh, the basic models are also evolving quite fast. So uh, we, the, soon the entire ecosystem will come out of these challenges. Um, and uh, uh, along with that, like you know, there is a very specific need of vernacular, which is mm -hmm. which is yeah. not yet there. Like you know, a lot of research is going on that. And uh, Indian students like to ask, ask questions in a voice mode, and like, you know they are like to ask questions in a vernacular. Come English, that is a big challenge moving ahead. And uh, like you know, uh, and it's an opportunity as well. Okay, Mayank, uh, quick thoughts to close that. Any guardrails that you know you would advise educators can put in place to deal with the challenges that the use of AI brings with that tech. Yeah, I think that's it. Some of the key challenges that everyone talks about is around copying, plagiarism, uh, who owns the work, whose IP it is. Uh, um, I mean, there's a bigger problem of misinformation and information bias hmm. that you may get the whatever. See, because we don't have local LLMs built in, we are leveraging some of the global LLMs built in. So, some of the times those biases definitely creep in, um, in in the way you want to sort of cover and sort of promote education in the in this context. So I think uh, those are the challenges that are there. Uh, and when, when new technology comes, these challenges definitely come up. I think one of the critical job of an educator is the context of assessments and measuring of the per uh, person's sort of efficacy. And I think those places, uh, the development of assessment are still not kept pace with the solution that have come to bypass the assessment process. And those are the places I intend to see better work coming along as we see how assessments become tighter with the uh, with the sort of coming around of AI in the process. Sure, we have a few questions that have come in from some of the uh, you know viewers that had logged in. Uh, there's an interesting one on what are the potential risks of over reliance on AI in the education process, and how can it be mitigated? Perhaps, Mahishwar, even in the context of you know career advice, uh, if you rely too much on AI. What are the risks it can generate? 
No, I think uh, it's not just about advice. Even for the learning side of it, Ritu, uh, hmm. when you standardize a set of questions, standardize a set of assessments, standardize a set of uh, you know curriculum and and so on and so forth, uh, what you like to get is a robo outside. So the critical thinking part of it is out. The cognitive abilities are out. Uh, the questioning ability is out. Uh, hmm. So and all these challenges come in. I'm all I've always been against uh, some of these tests because it tells you ये choice में छोड़ सकते हो आप ये क्वेश्चन आने वाला नहीं है सिर्फ ये पढ़िएगा इससे मार्क्स आने वाले हैं आपको राइट वॉट हैपन्स इज एट दैट पॉइंट इन टाइम द स्टूडेंट इज ओनली प्रिपेयरिंग टू क्रैक एन एग्जामिनेशन एंड दैट क्रिएट अ टोटली डिफरेंट प्रॉब्लम एंड ए आई इन माई परसपेक्टिव इफ इट्स नॉट यूज वेल विल विल यू नो एक्सटेंट दैट प्रॉब्लम दैट इट विल इंक्रीज दैट प्रॉब्लम बिकॉज इट विल टेल यू द शॉर्टकट्स ऑफ गेटिंग टू द आंसर एंड नॉट लेटिंग द स्टूडेंट डिस्कवर दैट आंसर राइट and that becomes a bigger challenge that we all as educators need to deal with right mm. the other thing that i have as a problem uh, as a statement you know because we are dealing with it as india edtech consortium and, and i think all of us as entrepreneurs need to address this issue is that technology and now ai is supposed to make make it you know uh, education accessible as someone said and education affordable mm. and ensuring that the outcomes that mayank was talking about are achieved right mm. and on all these three things the check boxes we still have a lot of questions to ask uh, answer ourselves uh, ask mm. ourselves because we haven't yet solved the access problem uh, though we say technology is all over the place and people access mobile are they accessing education content or they still going landing up at a at a coaching center right mm. uh, the second part of it is are we able to uh, solve the affordability problem has education become cheaper since ai and technology has come in mm. uh, i only see the fee going northward right well, and the third part of it is outcome so all these three i think ai can solve the problem if it is used well and i'm hoping some disruptive model will come which will use ai to hmm. solve this for the country and not for hmm. each of us but you know again not really answering what the over reliance on ai could do maybe uh, ujwal mayank prateek uh, ashish one of you wants to take that question if you rely too much on ai for education uh, what are the risks that could pose so i think one of the points that uh... Mahesh mentioned is very fair that look, I think the critical thinking does take a hit, and that's a very important point of any college or any school education that you need to be sort of, uh, you don't need a prescriptive response. Uh, but look, I think as a society, as a human sort of ecosystem, we are efficient and evolved enough. When calculators came, we did not become weak in math. Uh, I was going to say that, yeah. I mean, nothing wrong so, with using a calculator, right? Nothing wrong in. Uh, I think we, we will learn and pick up these things, and and hence yeah. our sort of own. agility to think beyond the box and come up with creative thinking and therefore there is going to be a premium of people who can think out of the box who can think creatively who can think in a very differentiated way and for that we need a very open education not a very jacket bound education uh, and that's one thing that over reliance can lead to uh, on ai in education okay um, the other question that has come in is what specific gaps or challenges in education does ai aim to address uh, would anyone want to take that i can i can take that uh, you know as i was speaking about the biggest challenge is get to know the child uh today in the education system uh, i actually i keep talking about this blood test report because you know in medical world is life so easy take one test and the doctor would know everything about it we take so many tests still help the child to specific area was always so difficult i think what what ai is going to do is that see patterns of a child taking various kinds of tests and exams in different point in time mm-hmm. and start understanding their strengths weaknesses conceptual understanding or calculation errors so it is not only about subject matter but kind of mistakes the child doing and then mm-hmm. start helping uh, the system back and imagine the teacher as doctor and then start helping the teacher to say that hey this child faces this kind of problem and then the teacher has to say that what is the best medicine for that i think that that's the best ecosystem to survive uh, to one last thing from my side we were talking about the uh, you know risk but as a country our data privacy rules are just getting formed uh, but yeah. i think yeah. uh, that's one area i think where a lot of work is going to happen in the next 4 5 years and mm-hmm. uh, all of us are preparing in our own way saying that how do you ensure that the data which we collect from the learners their personal data their examination the data and how can we ensure that that is uh, remaining private for the learner and the teacher yeah. for a best possible time? which hopefully the digital data the personal data protection bill will hopefully yeah. address 
there are a couple more questions that have come in. I think we've largely addressed them, but if any of you want to add more, can AI-based interventions effectively cater to diverse learning styles and preferences? If yes, how? I think uh, Pratik uh, answered that before, but if anybody else would uh, want to add. I think uh, Ujwal also wrote, uh, spoke about that actually already. Yeah. Okay, uh, I think that covers most of the questions that we've got. Bayank unfortunately had to leave. He had a hard stop at two o'clock. But uh, uh, Maheshwar, Ashish, Pratik, Ujwal, thank you very much uh, for candidly sharing your thoughts. I hope uh, the audience watching this will have something to take away. I certainly did. It was a pleasure speaking with all of you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank you.